a sketch, two maquettes, three different variations, and then a finished full-size mask. Hasn't been painted yet. These are out because I've had a lot of school groups come through recently, and so this is a really good way to show them each stage of the process. Like on a cooking show, though, we skip a few stages. My name's Iana Holton, I'm 28 years old, and I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So this is the upstairs of Spectre Studios. I'm the business manager at Spectre Studios. We make latex masks, costumes, and props. Everything is physically manufactured by hand in Pittsburgh. We have a place where people can utilize the skills that they've gone to school for um, and be full-time employees with healthcare, which is an incredibly unique thing. This is the designer's area. So this is where they take an idea and make it real, make it three-dimensional. It helps them flesh out the placement of the mask. Where are you going to see out of? Where are you going to breathe out of? How is it going to fit on the head? How big are different features going to be? It's much easier to make changes at this small miniature stage than on the finished product. We did a custom costume for Rob Deerdick, some bat wings for an episode of CSI Miami that Rob Zombie directed. We've been in a ton of independent films, um, web series. Our bears were used for an overseas Volkswagen commercial. I'm actually really lucky to get to move around the studio all day and do a little bit of everything. This is the catalog. This is the um, 2012 Spectre Studios catalog and it's always awkward to give these out to people because I feel like I'm handing them a catalog full of pictures of me. So I always joke, here, have a book of pictures of me. Yeah, that's me in the duck costume there. My favorite picture of myself in the catalog. The comment we always get is that our duck costume is the scariest costume we make. Things that scare people are always different, but we find consistently everyone says, oh my God, that thing is so creepy. And we take pride in that. Yeah. My, my big girl office. First time I've ever had an office in my life. I started sculpting in about 2008. I never fancied myself a sculptor or really an artist outside of makeup. Um, but I had ideas and I had things I wanted to make and things I wanted to do. And with a little bit of help, with material knowledge from the people I worked with at Spectre, I felt brave enough to try my hand. Um, I just make things that I like to look at. I have a fascination with seahorses for a number of reasons, but one, the men carry the babies, which I think is a great idea. Um, and they also mate for life, which I find very appealing. I'm a mother, I have a five-year-old son, and when he was two years old, he made the awesome decision to inhale a craft pom-pom, just a little tiny fuzz ball that was used for crafting. I was in the room, I didn't walk away, I was right there, but he managed to inhale it and get it lodged in his esophagus and it was blocking his airway. So a fire engine, an ambulance, and three hospitals later, he had it surgically removed. And I actually was insured at that time, but independent from my job because I couldn't afford the healthcare that my job offered. So I paid for it outside of that, but it was terrible coverage. And I had an obscene deductible that now, almost three years later, I'm still paying off. I made too much money to be covered by the state programs but I didn't make enough money to afford the good health care. So I was at this funny in-between where I just got screwed. I have many friends who work in the arts in different capacities, and most of them are uninsured, if not underinsured. They have to decide whether or not they're going to go get seen for something or pay rent, or go get seen for something or buy groceries. And it is mind-blowing that people have to still make those kinds of dis decisions. I think it's incredibly unfortunate and it seems like there's got to be a better way.